how do you release negative energy, stress, and negative emotions? Finding time to nurture your mind, body, and spirit is not an easy task. It takes patience and persistence and at times can feel impossible. You have to really make a commitment to take care of you. In today's episode, learning ways to nurture the mind, body, and spirit, we are going to talk about how our body is constantly evolving and learn ways to open space for something new to enter. Hi, I'm Lisa Hannigan. Welcome to Engage and Shine. I created this show for you because I believe we all have a spark that's ready to be lit. Now, before we can get into the glory and glamour that the lights, camera, and audio brings us, I believe we have to engage that inner spark, that inner energy, and then you can go out and shine on your stage. So what does it feel like when we're able to take care of all our needs? Imagine being in alignment and feeling good in all the areas of your life. Doesn't that sound pretty good? I know it does to me. And today's guest, she is going to share some valuable information And I know you're going to be walking away on a path to a new discovery and being more connected to you. Now, I have to say first, before we we formally introduce Nancy, that what I love about Nancy is that you can't help but to feel her positive energy as soon as you meet her. And you'll see As soon as you see her smile, how warm and inviting she is. And she just glows with this natural vibrance. Uh, So just natural to know that we're going to be able to learn this releasing of negativity from someone who feels so positive. So let me tell you a little bit about Nancy. Nancy wants to live in a world where people will thrive and not just survive both physically and financially. She assists health conscious adults in creating healthy lifestyles that can tweak as they age and provides resources to help entrepreneurs scale or scale or add additional income. Her first book, The GRT Journal, and GRT stands for Gratitude, Reflection, and Tips, is an Amazon bestseller. Her second book, A Collaboration of Entrepreneurs, Light at the End of the Funnel, I love that name, Volume 2. And she, she has a third book, it's a collaborative book also, Radical Self love. And currently, she's in the middle of a fourth book that's going to be released this year in 2022. Now, she's been cultivating her healthy cells chick. And I have to say, chick is spelled C-H-I-C-K. And I just love that. Her business since 2007, Nancy co-host North Carolina Happy Neighborhood Networking. And she also hosts her TV show, The Healthy Cells Chick, and it's also on Win Win Women TV and is a lifelong networker and connector. 
I am so excited about having Nancy on the show today. This is going to be so fun and fabulous and, of course, full of positivity. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, Lisa, thank you so, so much. I really enjoyed listening to you talk about me because <laughs> I think it's interesting because we're thinking about <laughs> it's nice to know what other people think about you sometimes, but I feel the same about you, Lisa. I mean, you have so much positivity and talents and gifts that you're sharing with so many people and you do shine. And so I'm so happy to be here and grateful and I love sharing any kind of things that can help people to just, you know, release those things that are being bombarded all the time or that we've been carrying with us for years sometimes mm. and they just keep you know sort of gnawing at us and so you know when those things start rising up again and and we all talk about you know the little self chatter and everything when that starts talking we need to find some ways to just you know silence it so, <laughs> thank you so much yeah. <laughs> i'm grateful to, i'm grateful to be here lisa Oh, yes. Well, and you're and it's so true. I, I mean, they do, they bubble up and they just mm -hmm. keep going. And sometimes they can overtake, you know, what really should be mm -hmm. going on. And mm -hmm. we, we have to find a way to move past that. So <laughs> I know, I know that it can be challenging sometimes, mm -hmm. though. Yes, and it is. And, and I have learned over the years, too. I mean, it's just not like, um, yesterday, we're always evolving and we're learning things that really benefit us and then can help other people too. <clears throat> but I would love prevention as much as possible. And we learn those ways to be as preventative, to keep our guards up and be able to, you know, just stand. And then when those times do come, finding those different techniques, and those different ways to help to alleviate and combat it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I read something the other day that just made me laugh really, Lisa. It said it was a little advertisement. It said for women, permanent weight loss. And I went, really? <laughs> Are they dead? <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there a <laughs> such thing? <laughs> I don't think anything permanent, but you know, because we're always working, we're always evolving and we're always, you know, we're maintaining our healthy lifestyles and um, especially that healthy mind, body and spirit. But one of the things I think is so important is for us, again, to have something that we get to put into place that we feel that we are flowing with ease and we're peaceful and content. We wake up every single day going, yay, I'm back. What's in it for today? But I do. I know reality. I know people go through a lot of tragedy, trauma, all those different things that, you know, they did not call into their lives a lot of time. And so what do you do? What do you do when those life happens? And so this is something fun. I love to share with women a lot of times and people, but I tell people, I said, you just <laughs> need to stop for a minute. You oh just, my you goodness. Just, you have a sign. I love it. <laughs> it is, we just have to just sort of stop and get peaceful and just do an, an assessment. And so, you know, if there is some things that are going on in this mind, you know, um, and in this day and time, um, I think it's increased. Uh, we've seen it over the last several years, especially that all these things that are just going on and on and on. And I'll say, just stop for a moment. We talk to ourselves anyways. So you might as well ask yourself, is this something I have control over? And that's a yes or a no. And if it's a yes, and we don't feel adequate or equipped, um, Lisa, to be able to handle some things, that's when we need to ask for some help. And a lot of times, women especially don't want to ask for help until things get to a point where it's affecting some other things. Mm. But just, you know, assessing the situation first and foremost. Um, and then even again, things for our physical health. <clears throat> we know it. We either have to move it or lose it. I mean, we're not just like this, those little rubber toys that we used to play with and, you know, you stretch them out and they go right back. Mm -hmm. No, we have to <laughs> take care of these physical beings. You know, we have to do those things. And those are, they have that domino effect for good. And, but there's the, also the opposite. They, if you don't, they have that little domino effect that we have some negative challenges that can arise. Mm. And 
you know, we're, everything we're doing, we're saying yes to something or no to something else. Mm. And, you know, so we're making the choices. And then for, you know, the healthy mind, the body <clears throat> and the spirit, you know, if we go on and on and on and on and on and we never stop, we never have that quiet time. We never have that time to just be able to reflect. Um, again, we learn from the past. We don't live in the past, but we can learn from the past and we can use that as a stepping stone. The spirituality is huge. There is so much noise and things going on in this day and time. And if we don't choose and schedule, and remember we schedule everything anyways, um, on our, I call it, you know, our phone is like our computer brain and, you know, it just controls everything. So if we don't stop and just schedule time to have that quiet time and have that time just to be able to, again, get nurtured, get built back up to release. And we were talking about, you know, releasing and receiving. And, you know, when we are releasing, that causes us ways that we are also being able to now be able to receive more. And if we don't, it's like trying to pour something into something that's already full. It's going to overflow. And, and sometimes it overflows in not a very nice way to people that we know and love that are in our um our environment and our surroundings so mm, yeah it's really important just helping people just to stop for a few minutes and um and you know and, and I'd love to share just some fun tips but what is it that you want to say Lisa because you yeah. look like, would like to say something <laughs> <laughs> no well I, I'm writing I, you know writing a couple things down as you're speaking and you know, I, I was thinking about, you know, we, you've already said so many good things, but I want to touch on what you were just talking about, the quiet time. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, why is it that you think, and, and I think women especially, why is it you think that we struggle so much to not take this quiet time? Like, you know, why do you think that we don't see that as something that's important to do? invaluable I think it's what we've been programmed I really think that you know from the time that you were growing up and it depends on the country and the different places and things but you know by the time we are growing up it's always the to-do list it's always mm -hmm. the task it's always you know what needs to get done right now you know and there's that's another great thing to find out sometimes just going is this something that can wait or is this a priority right now because then when life happens whether it's an accident or death or whatever, everything comes to a screeching halt. Mm. So I think it's from being programmed a lot of times, Lisa, from what we've learned. Um, and in our mind, you know, we've got to get this done. We've got to get this done. And then you have to be able to put a priority. I don't believe in work-life balance just personally, because that means that there's no it's moving. Even. And yeah. that means you're dead. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> a permanent weight loss or you're not, you're not moving but I think we have to you know plan and then we prioritize and we pace mm -hmm. and for women again put margin you know we get when we at the end of the day and we reflect back over the day and we look at all the things that we accomplished and we are grateful for the deeds of kindness what we did for fun as something too you know, especially for men too. What did you do that was fun today? I don't oh. care what it was, you know. Yes. You know, walk around. Do yes. For fun. Oh my goodness. Yes. And you know, it's so funny that you said that. I was listening to a podcast this morning and they were talking about uh how they were asked differently a question and it made them stop and think and realize. Uh, had a realization moment, you know, and the question was, uh, so the lady said she was on a business trip and she got in the back of a cab and instead of being asked, how are you? What do you do for work? The cabbie asked her, how are you? What do you do for fun? And she said she could not answer the question. Mm -hmm. And it made her in that moment realize oh my gosh, I'm always working. I, I'm not taking any time for me. What do I do for fun? 
I, I don't even know. And, and it's so funny that you said that because are we taking time for, like you said, quiet time for fun and getting in touch with ourselves and knowing ourselves? Yeah, I love that. It is. And, and, you know, sometimes we can be spontaneous and that's fun too, to be spontaneous and just do something, you know, um, off the cuff. But then a lot of times we have to plan some things, you know, we plan vacations, we plan, you know, birthday parties and celebrations. But sometimes we need to plan to have some fun and enjoy life. And whether, you know, there's so many great things. Dancing is awesome. You know, people that dance, they have like 70% less um, chance of having dementia. And there's certain things that you can do that have benefits. Um, <laughs> There are activities with benefits instead of friends with benefits, <laughs> but there are all these things that we can do that are not only good for us, but for the people in our lives. Mm. And why do we want to rush through everything so fast? I mean, life is already, people talk about how fast life goes. I'm going, yes, but you need to be able to enjoy it. And you need to be able to um, have those times where you can just be able to get refreshed and renewed. So I would love, um, Lisa, if it's all right, if we have just a couple of minutes too, I'd love to share some things for women, especially that I have learned over the years to sometimes release some of that pent up emotion. We won't call it anger, but we'll call it emotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, yes, please. Yes, yes, please share. So we know when things keep coming back to us, you know. Um, we've blessed and released, you know, some things and then things keep coming back. And it's sort of like that little worm that keeps eating or whatever, or grating at us. So one of the things you women can do, if they can just really feel like, you know, women carry their emotions in their hips and thighs anyways, but you can take a clean face cloth and roll it up and go into your closet and just put that face cloth in your teeth, in your mouth and just bite down on it. And just, just sort of yell from your gut, not to where it hurts your um, throat, but you just are yelling. And you, you can just do that several times. <clears throat> and then when you finish, you'll probably be coughing and doing some things. And that is some those those emotional things that are coming out and being released. So you can remember your clean face cloth. And, you know, if your eye starts twitching or if you start having these little signs or whatever of, you know, okay, I'm really getting full and I need to have a little release, you know, like that little pressure cooker, the little valve on it. Another thing that I have learned over the years, especially is beneficial, is to find a smooth little rock, just a round little rock. I should have brought one um, just to be able to show you. But what you can do is during your quiet time, having that time, yes, you got your rock. And so what you can do is whatever that thing is that is aggravating you that's still you know grating on you you name that and give that rock that name and then you take that rock and you put it in your hand and you just squeeze it Lisa till you can't hold it any longer you turn your hand over and just let the rock go and when you feel that release and it goes down and then you immediately turn that hand back over to receive because that's one of the things as we release we need to receive, we need to fill up whatever has been let go. And so this is a great little technique. I keep a, a, a pretty little smooth rock um, where I have my quiet times in the morning, just as a reminder for a lot of things. You don't need to teach children that because they will throw the rock. And so <laughs> that's something. But another thing too, a great thing is just to go to the dollar store and buy a Mylar balloon. It's just, you know, it's clear, just doesn't have any decorations on it. But you can take that things that are bothering you, the unforgiveness, those things that are coming up, that keep coming up and keep just, you know, um, have not gone away yet. Right all over that balloon, all those things that, you know, are really continuing to bug you. And just every time, you know, you're thinking about them, healing is like a process. It's like an onion. It's layer by layer. But you can just write all over that balloon and then you take it outside and don't stand under a tree. When you take it outside and you just let it go, but you need to watch it so you can't see it any longer. And then when those things that keep coming back to you, you say, I have released it and I cannot get it back. But again, after you have released something, you're going to have to fill it back up. 
And that's up to you, whether it is reading scripture, whether it's reading, you know, poems, whether it's singing and praising, putting music on, whatever you have created that space, then you need to work on refilling that space. And that is, that's the same for your mind, your body, and your spirit. It's the same for our nutrition. I mean, you know, you can either be putting in junk or jet fuel. And so um, we have to be mindful of all those different areas. And Again, bless and release can be with people too. And that's another whole topic. <laughs> so. I, you know what, Nancy, these are, these are wonderful. And uh, you know what, what I, first I want to, I want to say is what I really like about this is, is that you're saying it's okay that we get these emotions first off, because it, it's natural to become upset and to become aggravated. And I think, you know, a lot of people are, are, are told, you know, that that's not okay. You need to hide your anger to hold that inside. Don't show that emotion. And, and, and I, and I'm glad that, that we're, we're talking about this and that we're saying, no, that it, it is okay that, that, it, you know, anger or aggravation or frustration it's okay that you feel that way. We're going to have, those emotions are going to happen and they're, they're natural emotions. Mm -hmm. But what I love about this and where I think that people uh, are, are maybe missing this, this, this whole process that you went through that's beautiful to me is that we're, but like, for example, like the rock, uh, you know, I would the going through the squeezing and then the letting go, but then receiving something to replace that. I think that maybe people don't go all the way through that, uh, or even making it to the letting go. Even that part is, is difficult. That part, well, let's just plain out admit that letting go is difficult, but then if you do get there, if you do finally get there, what are you feeling it back up with? nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. Are you just leaving it empty? So I, I am so thankful that you shared that there, that this really is a, a process. And, and, and I feel like if, if you were to actually do, and I love the rock and the balloon, I don't know which one I like better. Um, but I love that if you, if, if you were to go through this whole process, I can see how this really really could leave you in a much better place, mm -hmm. feeling more whole uh, and not void inside. Absolutely. And, and that's what, you know, every single day, you know, we get to, again, take that time to become refreshed and renewed and re mm -hmm. revived and just mm -hmm. um, regenerated. And because it's like your car, you know, when it runs out of gas, what are you going to put in it? You've got to put something down to get back in it, you know? And so it's just the, the same kind of concept um, like you're talking about. And yes, life happens. I get bent out of shape. I get aggravated and I get angry and all this thing, but I get to choose how long I want to stay that way, you know? And I, there's sometimes, you know, if I want to go pout or do whatever I want to, I get to choose how long I'm going to do it. But I know that I can't stay there. I know that it's, you know, the things, and again, I have to, again, stop and ask myself those questions, you know, is this something I have control over? Is this something that, you know, that really matters? My mother, bless her heart, she was 96 when she moved home to be with the Lord, and she used to say, well, does it really matter in the kingdom? And I thought, what does that mean? <laughs> and so, you, know, you know, and I'm sitting there going, when you're dead and gone, does it really matter anymore? <laughs> And so anyway, but you know, I think for women, especially, it's just to be aware that we are going through things. We're bombarded all the time and it's completely natural because everybody is going through it. the same things at different levels. Surely things happen that we call not fair or whatever, but you know, we get to decide what we're going to do with all those situations. And yes, if you can't get rid of some things and release some things, bless and release some things, then we do need to ask or seek some guidance and some help. Because sometimes we just need to be able to share, to, to vent, to whatever, even if somebody can't, quote, fix it, but you know, they can help us to go through and navigate life. If we were here 
by ourselves, we wouldn't need anybody else, but we're not. And that's why we want to be able to sow into other people all the time. Lisa, and you do an amazing job. And like what you are doing too, using your gifts and talents, sowing into other people. They are better off after they have met you and been with you um, and seen those things that you have learned and that you pass on. So that's one of the things I really think that for everybody, you know, just we're here to be a part of mm -hmm. this incredible world. And, you know, we're not here. This is a one-way trip. You know, I'm 70. I'm believing I get to be about 130, but I don't know. And so, <laughs> so I just, you know, I'm going to keep doing my best and God will do the rest and just, you know, but I'm not perfect. But, you know, that's when I can just give myself some grace and space. Mm, that's so true. That's so true. And and you're right. I think having others around you that that share in you know this space and and have that similar quality and and belief that you know it's okay to be frustrated or to have these emotions, and uh, you know to share even in that that quiet time with you. Um, or the fun times with you as well. Um, it's so important. And, and, and I'm glad you brought up community because I feel like that's something that, uh, you know, we need to have more of because we get caught up so much in life a lot of times that we don't realize that we, we may be walking through a little bit of life in some areas alone. Mm -hmm. And, and we do, we, it, it is important to, to know that you have others that are experiencing similar things as yourself, like you said, at, at you know, at different levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there's others that are there for you so that you don't have to ever feel alone in what you're experiencing. So uh, I just think that's really an important aspect to, to cover and to touch on um, because that, that's part of, of nurturing relationships and, and things like that as well. And that has benefits because when you give and you are seeing somebody else that's coming up and rising up and improving. We get to witness that. Doesn't that make you feel, have more joy and gratitude? And so it's a mutually beneficial thing. You know, you can't give um, with a pure heart without ulterior motives and false intentions without receiving just some of that peace and contentment, just going, you know what? I can do things for other people, however small or large, even if it's just remembering somebody to text them and going, I was thinking about you today mm -hmm. and wanted to let you know that, you know, you are near and dear to me, whatever it is, taking that two, three seconds, you know, to extend that deed of kindness, not only is a great benefit for them, but it also benefits us too. And mm -hmm. we don't focus on that. But you know that because then you stay filled up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. That's one of my favorite things to do. And, yeah, and there's all kinds, like you said, it can just take two or three seconds. There's all mm -hmm. kinds of those little gifts that you can text to people that say, thinking of you. And it yeah. just, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Well, I I am so, so grateful to, to have had you to share time with uh, you know, the listeners and, and, and the people who are in the audience today, I, I can't tell you enough how, how much I appreciate uh, your wisdom and knowledge. And I know that we could have shared a lot more. <laughs> well, I'll have to have you come back and share more uh, because those were very great tips. And I know you probably have way more than, <laughs> than that to share. Uh, but where can our, our listeners and viewers, where can they find you, Nancy, if they want to learn more about about you and all the wonderful knowledge that you have. Lisa, the easiest way is just to go to my website. There's um, fun things there that they can get like for a stress quiz or a health quiz, but there's a way to contact me. And I love having conversation just to get to know people. But, you know, it's www.thehealthysaleschick.com. And, you know, there's ways there that they can connect with me on social media. And I love learning from other people, but I also love being able to share any little tips, um, especially if people have gone through some challenges in the past. 
shoot, we get new bodies every six to eight years. You might as well make a new good one. I know. I know. I, you know what? That's a statistic that I was a little surprised by uh, when I read that in your bio. I was like, you know, that that feels right. I think my body has changed about every six to eight years. So, wow, I, I'm glad that she said that in her bio. So, well, thank you again for being here. That is all the time that we have on the Engage and Shine show. I do want to encourage you, if you are wanting to live your best life now, I would love for you to, to join my community. It's called Bold, Uplifted, and Fulfilled. It's on Facebook, so you can find it there. It's full of heart heart-centered women, and we're all looking to live our best life now. We talk about all kinds of subjects in there, and so you're welcome to find me there and on social media. I'm on Instagram as at Glimmer Learning. That's the name of my business. You can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn as Lisa Hannigan, and please check out more of the shows on Win Win Women. You'll find Nancy there as well, along with lots of other fabulous shows on 24-7. We're here to empower, inspire, and educate you. Thank you for joining us today. And until the next episode, keep shining.